I was looking for a picture of the Toronto Power Station and I came across an entire historical collection by a gentleman named Francis J. Petrie. There's many signs of miniature models being used, many signs of editing, a lot of damage that was documented, a lot of flooding, transparent men obviously, but we're gonna see the snazzy corner. Before it was like foreground, middle ground, background, and shadow man but Francis brought it to a whole new level. Before I dive into his collection, I would like to introduce Francis. Conveniently, this biographical sketch of Francis J. Petrie is available for us on this website. Born and educated, hold on, I can't see this. Born and educated in Niagara Falls, employed at Cyanamid of Canada, Welland Plant in the research section. I just typed in Cyanamid to see what's going on. There's an entry here called Signs of Cyanamid. Cyanamid was a notorious chemical plant in Niagara Falls that dominated the entire northeastern corner of the city. Stories from early residents of taking blackened laundry off clotheslines and wiping soot off car windshields every morning were legendary. Cyanamid was officially declared hazardous, demolished and removed in 1992, prompting an intense municipal debate about the future brownfield development. In 2011, the Gale Center Hockey Arena was finally built on a portion of the property much to the dismay of environmental critics. Niagara Falls City Council adamantly defended the decision, stating that there were absolutely no signs left of cyanamid. The argument even prompted one councillor to state that he would crouch down and lick the ice upon its completion to prove that the area was environmentally safe. Okay, hold on, buddy. All right. I work with one of the city councillors involved and he recently challenged me to access the restricted areas around the arena and prove to him that one could still tell cyanamid existed here. Wow. Historical qualifications. Official historian of the city of Niagara Falls. Author of weekly column on local history in the Niagara Falls Review for more than a decade. Francis J. Petrie began clipping articles of local historical interest in 1932. He wrote a weekly column about local history for the Niagara Falls Review beginning in 1961. He had a lifelong interest in history, particularly local history. Received gifts of documents, photographs, postcards, newspaper clippings, and other local history material through his office as city historian. Died September 23rd, 1983. Rest in peace. Thank you, Francis, for all that you have done. So this is called the cast of the rededication of Old Fort Niagara ceremony in front of the armory on Victoria Avenue. What on earth is going on? This is September 1934. So let me just look up rededication of old Fort Niagara because what are you rededicating? I can't find anything that actually like talks about it. This, which just links me to news articles, it doesn't actually link me to what it says. In 1934, Old Fort Niagara opened as a historic site and public museum. No news articles for 1934. So this is when they rededicated the area. Why is it just a man chilling? And how come they're miserable? I mean, okay, some of them. I have a hunch that this foreground is separate. You see this line, this is separate. I'm really interested in what is going on here and I don't like this picture. This is what we just saw, Armory on Victoria Avenue just after its completion. My friends, my friends here. Let's look at this building just after its completion. First off, we have a horse, we have a carriage, we have a whole lot of mud. Now this is ignoring the fact that the horse and carriage are see-through. This building is sunken into the ground. This isn't actually there. Let's take note of the wires though that are all over the place. This is called Cyanamid's President's Energy Conservation Award flag. Men holding the flag are unknown. That's so convenient. My friends, again, let's look at this because this is weird. President's Energy Conservation, this factory is weathered. The lines in the dudes, they're see-through. Okay, look, boom. Yeah, come on, dude. See, this is its own layer. Boom, boom, dudes. Cr 
cropped around, convenient. What does that remind you of? Energy conservation word, yes. But also, I mean, you've got a grip on that energy for sure. It also looks like legs. It just, it's so ominous and also super telling. They really did capture it. This is Krager's Garage and Machine Shop on Queen Street and St. Lawrence Avenue. If you looky here, you see, wow, this looks really matte. Why is this section really matte? And why is there like a shadow? And why is this section matte as well? And also, why are these bricks in sections of six by three? Like what is going on? Even over here, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, like whatever. I will tell you why I'm gonna answer your questions. This is a printed picture that is printed, slapped on top of a miniature model made out of these little tiny bricks that's painted on top of. This is connected just to make it seem connected, but these, the window is a picture of a window. This is a picture of a door. And if you notice on the letters where it says cylinder, reboard, and piston fitted, the wood grain disappears around the letters. And that's because he actually physically painted on the picture after printing it. It never said this anywhere. He just painted it on and then tried to blend it in with the wood in the background. That's why the seams kind of disappear because that doesn't happen in real life. This is painted on the miniature. If you look up here, you can definitely see fingerprints from making it dirty look like looking like a shop okay i'm gonna try to move it around maybe that's not helpful this is a fingerprint like to scale you can't tell me that's not a fingerprint it doesn't seem like that much of a big deal when it's like oh it's just Krager's garage it's a big deal when it's historical narratives and historical photos which i am about to show you this is called canadian military force marching up queenston heights july 1915 keep that in mind no you don't have to keep that in mind because i will show you so notice how this is called Canadian Expeditionary Military Forces Marching Up Queenston Heights Hill 1950. I'm going to hit enter. Here's a lighter version and it's called Camp Niagara, Fort Mississauga, Niagara on the Lake. There's something going on here. I spy with my little eye, my friends. Well, keep an eye on that rock, okay? You notice how they're marching and that little rock is there oh wow that rock is still there that is unbelievable that rock has not moved wait the rock is still there like the rock has not moved he's unmovable it's an unmovable rock but you know what else is strange all three of these photos have the exact same backdrop just the zoom is altered and the contrast is altered, okay? And in one of them, there's this bus that isn't there. But if you just see, like, look at what surrounds, minus this being reused a thousand times, okay? And them just putting people, a few people over here, whatever. Keep your eye on this little buggy thing right here. Okay, I'm gonna move back. Okay, it's like see-through now, I guess, but whatever. It's like, they're really utilizing it. And then over here, and that's part of the car, okay. This is supposed to be like part of the horse buggy. This dude's freaky. It's the exact same. It lines up. It's not convenient. They didn't happen one second after another. They're reusing this backdrop for whatever. But come on, dude. You're telling me that rock didn't move. And they're all faceless, strange people. And they're all transparent. That's irrelevant. This, look at this block section that was pasted. Don't even talk to me. These people, don't, I don't even want to talk to them. It's like a different section of people over here. Look, look, this little tiny section of people. Oh, now they're doing this. It's, it, it's the same backdrop. They just made a couple little collages on it. Like, seriously. Pay attention to this part right here while I go between them. Look, boom. It's just getting, it's just zoomed in and out. They adjust the crop, use the same background. They're playing like, I don't even know. Let's move on. Okay, this is Albert King of Belgium and N.W. Rowell. If I can follow a pattern of any type from the background through the person in front of it, you can see ever so slightly that tree continues back through him. Look at that. That is a cut right there. So this section of people, they're all together. I don't know what's going on, but they're part of like a layer. Isn't it so convenient that this line just goes with everything? It's always like that. This is see-through. Come on, look at that. I can literally see through it. 
Behold, a white horse. Why is the shadow not reaching over there? The tree looks sideways. Okay, this is called Ontario Power Co. Transmission Lines over MCR and GTR tracks, Niagara Falls, Canada. We have a layer right here. This is up close grass. You see that line? And then over here, we have a medium grass layer. Like they can make perspectives and alter perspectives by just using layers of grass from like different perspectives, just like this. You can see the line where like they keep doing the different layers and stuff. They do need to show us these power lines somehow, but let's see, see this line back here, that straight line, that's its own layer, that background's not real. Okay, this one is called the interior of powerhouse Ontario Power Niagara Falls Canada I put dollar bills on the fact that he's not there especially like he's see-through don't care you let go and dude this is in early 1900s let me tell you hold on keep in mind outside there's a horse and carriage just walking around this is called construction on Robert Street and Victoria Ave Niagara Falls this is a great example of hey we're building on top of stuff you could see that color change can I zoom in more yeah he's not there you can see he's see-through don't even look at him this may be the first example of the snazzy corner so you see this little snazzy corner that we have going on that is part of the formula francis will use to make it scenic i don't know but here he's got that triangle he's got that snazzy corner let's keep a lookout for more snazzy corners this is such an important picture i saw this and i thought it was absolutely amazing this is labeled as decaying portion of a dry dock from niagara shipbuilding company at niagara on the lake i have a little hunch that it might not actually Actually be on this background just the way that the shadows in the background kind of blend in and also the way that there's some shadows on the wood itself that don't continue like this whole thing is weird I'm getting some transparent vibes but I don't know this might be a giant tree see this looks razored this looks like it was like razored and like they're being weird about it see here there's lines like that that are like visible behind it so I don't really know what to think there but they're definitely showing us something like right here the shore is razored because there is such a quick difference in the transition from the water in here look at that boom get out of here that's a collage this is called construction of the hydro conduit under queen victoria park i have a bit of a hunch mcgunch that this is a different layer than this background because i can kind of see the background continue through uh this says conduit looking into end of completed section of conduit near sta 45 july 8 1910 wonder what goes on in those tunnels okay this is called a damaged cement stack at port colburn cement plant the date is January 12th, 1971. First off, if that's supposed to be a person, they're not there. All right, let's see if there's any more man amongst rubble. Because that's, that's one of the characters that they really like. Why is this stained like this? I have a hunch that this showed water. This looks like it could have like just shown the water. They just painted up there. Because look at that. They just painted that up there. I wonder if that's part of a snazzy corner. But look at that whole cement stack. This looks like it's been sitting there for a while. When I get to the damage category, I'm actually going to be comparing them to the Canadian Disaster Database. It starts September 11th, 1900. I feel like this website deserves a video on its own. This is May 28th, 1908. On September 25th, a geomagnetic storm created significant telegraphic disturbances around the world, including transatlantic cables. Auroras were reported in Singapore, which was the lower latitude ever reported. July 17th, 1902. On October 31st, a geomagnetic storm that lasted for eight hours created significant disruptions to the telegraph, telephone, and cable systems around the world. I am going to compare the dates and see if they line up with like an actual disaster. This is Niagara Peninsula Shrine Club at Mr. Maxim Gray's residence, July 20th. 1951. I just want to take a look here and see what's going on. So this guy's invisible. I can see the tree behind him. Is this sign even here? Look at that. Oh my goodness. Look at this. Okay. Look at the line on the bottom. See, look at the way this bottom of the sign is. It goes down here and then up like that. Like I can see the skyline behind it through every single one of their heads. So strange. Cyanamids, well and plant fire marshals, question mark standing in front of accident billboard 1953. Okay, I thought this only happened in movies. You see these lines? Like, there's not a single normal line that isn't 
interrupted. Those are random layers. No matter how urgent the job may be, we must take the time to do our work safely. Days since last accident, 199 accidents per month. What's going on in February? You know this is one of my favorite photos in this entire collection. Look at this. They were so thoughtful to leave us these razor marks. They razored something out of this photo. Whatever's blanked out here is weird. And also up here, this is like whited out. That's like strange. See how this is weathered? And then this is like, what is this? Very strange how the power line, they disappear. Like what's going on here? And then they go there. They get messed up here. So you could blame it on the scan maybe, but nothing else is altered. Everything else is fine. Construction of Niagara Square. January 5th, 1977. But like, why is there this whole pile of snow right here? Something Francis loved to do apparently was waistline in line with the horizon which was done here like perfectly this is a layer this is its own layer it actually includes these guys I can see around their feet these tanks I can see right through them the line goes right through there and it's just weird also what is this hole what is going on there it looks like it would be wood ceilings I think that's wood underneath and then here it's like already has a ceiling I feel like I can see like this was painted over because I can see the line it like continues it's weird Welland ship canal construction of the Welland dock this is like drawn okay important to note that these are like toy cars like come on and what is this and like here too it seems like a lot of this dirt they like tried really hard to like paint it and make it look real but it also does seem like I can see this same texture like right up here I mean it's cool it's important to see these but I'm not buying it this is called approach to rainbow bridge this is its own layer this is like entering miniature territory because this is weird look at that there's that whole light edge on the edge of that and that's weird this wobbliness not buying it uh, this whole separation of line of trees, like someone made this. It's a weird shadow. And it's a vanilla sky. Okay, this is called construction of new wartime houses. This is ridiculous. These are, this is miniatures. That's paper, that's flat. Who even makes houses like this? Look at the top of them. Look at that. Paper, 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 not real. Don't buy it. Aerial view of Welland Canal over Townline Tunnel. It's also important to see what you can see through it. That could be a razor mark, because there's a lot of marks like that. I can't tell if this is like really close up in front of my face or so far away. Is this like a little settlement next to like this colossal boat? Like, see what I mean? Look, this is like a little settlement right beside this boat. So either this is massive, that's not that far away. June 16, 1972, Cyanamid Plant Niagara Falls. They're moving a bunch of mud and the plant is like in the background, but also the heck is that? Horse and buggy is outside the bank. All right, so first off, these men are invisible. I can see right through them. I've noticed that there are postcard versions that enhance the editing that was done on an original photo. This is a layer right here. These men are completely see-through, so they were a different layer. That lady is not there. But also, look at all this mud. This is called the Niagara District Airport Tower under construction, except it's completely constructed. This is where I noticed that that is weird it seems like they use cranes to like disguise other kinds of lines and stuff like that so see this look at that that's ridiculous this is city hall downtown st catherine's i can see the sidewalk through the tree I can see the building completely through the tree. There was already something like hanging down there maybe that they tried to combine and then the overlap darkened. Captain Bud McGinn of Made of the Mist hosing down rocks on the shoreline. Thank you, Bud, for being here and holding this with his one, two, three. Okay, one, two, three, four five and a thumb one two three four hold on let me start from this side one two three four five six yeah not a real photo i have a hunch that this guy just wanted like a cameo what is this why is this single rock so loud this is called the sholkoff power generating station at the base of niagara george seen from canada this looks like a real miniature that i see them use but it feels like they're actually mixing it in with some real like 
realness going on. This is see-through. Whatever's going on here is see-through, dude. Crane near the wreckage of the Falls View Honeymoon and Upper Steel Arch Bridge. So you guys are gonna see what's called the Death Watch, where they stood around and watched a bridge collapse. What are these wires connected to? And what is this doing? What is this? He's just scooping snow. This is Cyanamid Plant Welland, May 1969. Uh, and the names of the people are unknown. We have no idea who these gentlemen are. And honestly, I don't think anyone does. This is Cyanamid Welland Works Fire Department presents a display of fire equipment and safety. Pyramid is interesting. Also, <laughs> his legs do not line up with the top half of his body. I'm sorry. Unless he's doing the twist or something. Like, hold on. Is his leg over here? This leg's over here. Does that say Cyanamid? There's a light bulb there. I don't know what that is. It looks like a mask or something. I'm not sure. I <laughs> have no idea what that is. Uh, but this is interesting. Crystal Beach Amusement Park, the Cyclone Roller Coaster. Do I have a year? No. I feel like I can see trees through that. I feel like I can see this whole tree line. Oh my goodness. There are things in the sky. Not buying. Anything they ever try to sell me in my life. 